Hey everyone! Now that we've got our basic shapes that overall look like Sonic, it's time to combine those shapes together in a process called retopology. Retopology is the simplifying of the topology of a mesh to make it cleaner and easier to work with. So let's do that! But first, I want to make a few minor changes. First of which is that his knees need some more geometry. So select this edge loop and hit Ctrl Shift R to offset with two edge loops. And then, with smooth proportional editing and my pivot point at medium point, I want to kind of move these back edges closer together. Then select the back three edges and dissolve edge loops with X. I found that the front of his knees were still pretty blocky, as you can probably see with the running pose turntable, so you might want to add a few more edge loops if you want to round the knee. It's all up to you. Now we're going to join the legs, body, tail, and quills into one object. For organization's sake, create a new collection and put these four objects into it. That way we can turn off everything else and have a nice open viewport for Retapo. The quills and tail are currently curves, which we'll want to convert into a mesh. Before we do that, let's make sure the radius of the tips are set to zero. Now shift select the two curve objects. Hit Alt C to bring up the Convert To menu, switch the target to mesh, and I would like to keep the original. I like to keep the original so that you can go back and create higher poly versions if you want to, or if you mess anything up. I should have taken the mirror modifiers off of my curves before converting them, but no big deal, let's just delete half of the mesh. It looks like, just by chance, this vertex on my quills was close enough to the mirror point that the two sides are merged together. So I'm going to hide this vertex, then select anywhere on this side and hit Ctrl L to select all link geometry. Now I can hit X and delete this half. On the tail, deleting half is pretty easy. Now we can shift select the tail and quill and hit Ctrl J to join them together. Also Alt H to unhide that middle vertex. Now we can add a new mirror modifier and use the body as the mirror object. I've found that I prefer to leave my meshes mirrored, so that during rigging, weighting automatically mirrors itself. There are a lot of different ways to rig, and I am far from being a professional, but that's what I like to do. When you're weighting, you can also enable symmetry in the brush setting to do the same thing, if you prefer. It looks like the legs are already ready to go. Already ready to go. So we can shift select and join them as well. Circle select the tip of his tail and merge the vertices with M. Don't forget to have clipping enabled in the mirror modifier. We also want to take the tips of these quills and merge the vertices together with M. So now what I'm going to do is select the parts of these three objects that I want to keep the geometry from, so all of the legs, all of the tail that doesn't clip into the body, and the back half of the quills. More or less any vertex that is outside of the body object. Hit Shift D to duplicate, then P to separate by selection. So here's the start of our final body object. We need to complete the shape so that it's one enclosed object. You can just, you know, leave it open too if you want to be done. Sometimes it can kind of be difficult to discern what's happening, but by enabling random color, it makes it a bit easier to tell everything apart.
and I want to enable the object's wireframe so I can quickly position new vertices on or near where the old ones are. Since I'm retopoing over really low poly meshes, I don't have much choice but to try to line up my new geometry as close as possible otherwise things will look weird. But most of the time you're retopoing over high poly sculpted meshes, which leaves the placement of new geometry more to your discretion. Enabling in front on the retopo object can also be helpful, so it shows up in front of every other object in the viewport. It can also make things slightly more confusing looking at times. Turning on backface culling can reduce some of this confusion, but I have yet to find the perfect viewport settings that don't require occasionally adjusting as you work through the retopo process. The legs are going to be in the way, so I'm going to select and hide that portion of the mesh for now. Now we're about to actually start retopoing. Are you excited? I'm excited. Let's place some vertices. Uh, we need to turn on snapping and choose what element we want to snap to first though. Uh, I'm probably going to be using vertices, edges, and faces the most. Let's start with edges. I lied, vertices. Now as we extrude vertices out, they snap to where vertices already exist. Fill in faces as you go. Edge Snap lets you snap your extruded vertices along any edge. Once again, this part is totally personal preference. Just do whatever you want. You don't have to make the same topology decisions as me. Also remember, if you try to extrude from the mirror line with clipping turned on, the vertex will be trapped, so you'll temporarily have to disable clipping. The goal is to build a shape that resembles a combination of all of these shapes. If you don't like having a ton of tries, you can add in more edge loops along the body. But I mean, I made his tail out of a four vertex circle, so I'm kind of committed to keeping it low poly. I'm ready to unhide his legs and connect them to what we've got so far.
and edges with the knife tool as needed. If you're snapping a lot of stuff together, it's a good idea to select all and merge by distance on occasion to clean up the extra edges. If there's particular areas where you dislike your topology, you can always go back and change it pretty easily. The body was pretty easy, it's mostly just copying what's already there. Recalculate your normals outside if any of the faces point the wrong way. With an extra edge loop here, this shape is almost complete. It's safe to turn off the other objects now, and look for anything that has undesirable shading, creases, or shapes. You won't run into these issues as often on slightly higher poly retopos. You can adjust the positioning things to smooth out the shapes or add more geometry, either way is completely fine. And at this point, his entire body is 245 tries if you're uh, into the try counts. I've got an extra edge in here that I need to track down and get rid of. I must have accidentally added it at some point with F instead of dividing a face with J. So essentially I have a quad with an edge over the top of it instead of two tries. Instead of texturing on Sonic's stomach, I'm going to add a few edges and assign a material. If we bake these textures, we can get rid of this extra geometry later.
All right, that's his body retopoed, and an excellent place to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave us a like or subscribe if you're not. Next time, we'll continue on the retopo journey, and boy, it's a journey. Retopo takes a bit of time. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye. Ugh.